Raven. All righty, gearheads. This is a departure from what's normally seen on this channel. We're going to take ourselves a little journey into Bigfoot intelligence. I know. Just come along. It might be worth a watch and a share. So we hopped in Todd Nice's Porsche Boxster S and headed on up to Kelso, Washington for the Squatch Fest 2022. It didn't take long. So let's take a look at what went on at the Squatch Fest 2022. I am telling you what viewers, there was no lack of variety at this event. Coffee mugs, t-shirts, artwork, and so much more. Let's take a look around. The event speakers started off with a round table discussion. The divisiveness and the division in the Bigfoot research community that's going on right now, there seem to be camps. You know, there's the flesh and blood camp. Then there's the paranormal camp. But nobody really knows. We don't have a specimen on a table to study. In my opinion, there are no experts in this field. There are people that know a lot about stuff. Jeff, I mean, the, everybody on the stage right here, these are all heroes of mine. And, and another one just showed up, Todd Neese back here. Uh, but nobody really knows all these answers yet. And I think to just go hard line on it, I think is arrogant. I think you have to keep an open mind and move forward and just learn the most that you can. I don't think they're paranormal at all, um, to, to, because again, I'm an evidence-based researcher, and it takes more than a story for me to think something is true, especially when we're talking about something like this. Um, the footprint evidence, I'm looking at a, couple, a handprint and a footprint on the ground in front of us, the handprint and the footprint evidence is, inter is completely internally consistent with other non-human primates. Um, everything about Sasquatches indicate that they evolved here on the planet. You mentioned dimension, that was your question. We live in the third dimensional parameters here. We're a three dimensional environment. And yet, as we established mathematically, there's more. And we only see with this in parameters. Everything is energy, frequency. And, and uh, anyway, it goes on from there. I'll talk about it tomorrow. And it's kind of fun. I'm excited about it because I think, I think I'm on to something. But um, I'm a woo woo guy. <laughs> the woo woo is uh, it's just a term used. Paranormal, woo -woo, whatever you want to call it, just gets outside of the uh, Newtonian physics solely. Because if you're just going to wait for the evidence that Newtonian physics is going to show you, you might wait a long, long time. But that's what we're all mostly waiting on is something that you can nail to the wall. These things are like trying to nail jello to the wall, you just can't do it. But um, if there's one principle of science that is an important uh, discriminating tool, it's, it's the principle of parsimony. It doesn't say that the simplest explanation is the correct, but it says that until you can reject or falsify the simplest explanation, you're not justified to leap to more fanciful explanations or more complicated, let's put it that way. Fanciful is a little judgmental, maybe. They're very, very elusive, and if you have had an experience with one or you're a researcher, like. Uh, Shane and Jeff, they've been out and done mil millions, I wouldn't say millions, they've done lots of TV shows. Cliff, Jeff, and Derek and Shane have been the active researchers who go out and bring you information and take all their information and uh, absorb it because they really all know a lot about it. All right, guys, here we are at the Squatch Fest 2022. I got Tom here. We're going to let him. Uh, Talk to you a little bit. I'm gonna let you guys hear what he's all about. Uh, it's a little bit different, so lay it on him, Tom. Kayla Kasla, greetings in my language from the Kwakwakiwak people of northern Vancouver Island. My name's Tom Seawood and I operate Sasquatch Island, which is a Facebook group as well as a YouTube channel. I work with Monster X Radio, monsterxradio.com. I do a podcast series called Sasquatch Island as well. Uh, quite a few years I lived in the bush you could say 26 
or longer. I lived out off northeastern Vancouver Island. I've been a commercial fisherman on the British Columbia coast for going on 46 years. So when I wasn't in bush, I was traveling throughout the entire British Columbia coast to places that people who know about Sasquatch television shows and watch them. They might hear places like Clem 2, where Les Stroud went, the Survivor Man, for his first Bigfoot show. Uh, West Coast Vancouver Island, Bella Bella, Clem 2, Newhalt from Bella Coola. Places that most people will never get to, especially Sasquatch enthusiasts and investigators. Well, I've been there and I've talked to my fellow fishermen and my fellow First Nations, Canadian Indians, and they've shared with me their stories and perspectives and encounters of Sasquatch. In the U.S., they like to call the creature Bigfoot. My tribe, we call it Chonakwa. So what I did a few years back is when I came out of Bush and I moved to Kent, Washington with my partner in life, Peggy, I started to talk on the different podcasts. Sasquatch Chronicles invited me to their show six times, Spaced Out Radio, and the list goes on. But what the Sasquatch community heard of enthusiasts and investigators and people that like the art and stories was I knew something about the native side of things, the Indian stories, as well as me living in the bush for almost three decades. So the people want to hear more about the North American Indians' view towards Sasquatch and our encounters. We hear from me and others that a lot of Sasquatch activity has taken place in our Indian villages, and in our Indian reservations, our tribal lands. And I'm sort of like the ambassador between the North American Indians and the people that want to know about Sasquatch. I do television productions. I've been in a movie called Bigfoot Girl on Netflix. I've been in numerous documentaries with uh, Dr. John Bindernagel when he was alive and others. But what it's all about is, here we are in 2022. I can grab my cell phone and speak to a friend in the west coast of Australia with a push of a button. But isn't it amazing to know that in this modern world, we still have a creature out there we haven't fully identified yet. We have no subject, none, no dead one has been brought in. No interaction like Diane Fossey and Jane Goodall has taken place like they did with mountain gorillas and great apes. And that's what these people here, these investigators that are here like Dr. Jeff Meldrum, uh, Derek Randalls and Shane Corson and Todd Hale with the Olympic Project to my left, uh, Robert Alley who wrote the book Raincoat Sasquatch just behind the camera, and others. We're trying to get conclusive proof, but at the same turn, we're having a lot of fun. Look at this, we get to dress in fancy garb, we get to buy all of the Sasquatch t-shirts and coffee cups and sculptures, you name it. And we get to converge in these big Sasquatch festivals throughout North America. And it's becoming something that's equivalent to the other big conventions that are taking place, be it for uh, anime conventions or hunting conventions. We now have this huge industry of Sasquatch Bigfoot conventions. And I highly recommend join the Bigfoot Sasquatch groups that are on the internet, especially on Facebook, like mine, Sasquatch Island, on Facebook, as well as SasquatchIsland.com. And you'll keep in tabs of where these festivals are taking place. Behind me is SasquatchLegend.com, and you can see the native design t-shirt that I've done eight designs so far of my West Coast Native Indian tribe's interpretation of a Sasquatch we call Tlunakwa. And if you go to SasquatchTheLegend.com, they have a page that tells you where these Sasquatch conventions and festivals are. So hopefully you too can come to us and meet us and hear what we have to say because it's amazing. And you can even take expeditions with us. And if you don't believe in the Sasquatch, please don't bother us with your skepticism because I could care less about it. But if you do have a curiosity or you believe in it, come and meet us. Come join us at our festivals. I thank you some, very much. I might take some of them on just for fun. I don't know. Oh, uh, yeah. With me and Todd and he's get this channel going, uh, uh, I'm glad to, uh, you gave us all this input. And I certainly look forward to having you on it again, you know. Give us some reports from out there. Oh, definitely. Just give me a show. I'll be on. Great. Well, I appreciate you taking the time for this. Man. 
So we roll back in Saturday and bounce right into uh, the producers of the next documentary that Todd is in. Stay tuned here, folks, for the latest. We're doing this documentary thing. Yeah? I'm trying to finish it. So, yeah. What's the name of it? We'll put it out there. A Flash of Beauty, Bigfoot Revealed. Flash of Beauty. Coming soon to a screen near you. Yay. All right, soon you got away. it. This is a it's beautiful car, Todd. Yeah. Thanks. Take care. A lot of fun. Touch upon it, and if, if I if I am saying something that he did not address, just somebody you know throw something at me and, and let me know, okay? But I, I like this picture a lot because there's no Sasquatch print on there. But from the left to right of those um, ape feet up there, um, you have chimpanzee, lowland gorilla, mountain gorilla, and humans. Yeah. By the way, everybody can relax. We're all apes here. Okay, humans are in fact apes. I'm talking about biology. No matter how special you think you are, you're an ape. I'm sorry. And if you don't think you're an ape, then, then, then you don't have shoulders that are wide like this, like I have, like you do have. You don't have fingers and toes, and you don't have, well, you probably have a tail. Because if you have shoulders like I have, and you have fingers, and you don't have a tail, you're an ape. Sorry. Deal with it. We're talking biology here, not religion or philosophy or any of that other nonsense. We're talking about real stuff, science, yeah. okay? So uh, we are an ape, and if you look at these ape footprints, what, what you see is that the hallux, which is the big toe, the hallux is kind of off to the side in the chimpanzee, then a little bit further forward in the lowland gorilla, then even further forward in the uh, mountain gorilla, and totally forward in the human. And you also see that the heels get bigger in each one, right? And that is an accommodation for a large mass animal spending less time in trees. <laughs> Infant feet are very similar to Sasquatch feet. In proportion, size, flexibility, the flexion creases on the bottom, these are all very, very similar to Sasquatch feet. Um, the footprint is not the shape of the foot. It is the shape of the damage done to the ground by the foot as the thing walks by. And the foot being all thick and fatty and leathery like that, can kind of, that changes the shape of the damage to the ground. That changes the shape of the footprint. Things you need to keep in mind when you're tracking Sasquatches. Okay, these are the lady Sasquatches. Take it away, girls. Hi. Hey. I'm Sarah, Katie, and Christy. And we kept seeing a male in marketing displaying our wonderful Sasquatch, and we decided to bring a woman out. So we created Lady Squatch. So we're big believers. There's tons of women out there, and now we're bringing her to life. And we are based in Portland, Oregon, Northwest and made. Everything is made and designed by us. This is our designer. Uh, yeah. Christy picks out the clothes. I do all the business stuff. And that's who we are. We're a good team. Do you have any questions for us? Thanks, girl. Yeah, you can find us at squash.com. That's where it is. Well, first off, I'd like to say thank you all for coming. I know you've been sitting here hours and hours, and I hope, uh, hope to keep it a little bit interesting. Uh, big shout out to the organizers of this event. Julie has done an, just an amazing job. Craig's done an amazing job. And it's kind of cool. It's, it's a place we can all get together and geek out about Bigfoot. It's a lot of fun. So I didn't know until about five days ago that I was going to be speaking here. Uh, David Pilate is canceled due to some threats, which to me is just, uh, it's horrific. Uh, that should not be going on in this, in this world. But thinking back through the years of my research, which has been going on for 37 years now, and I realized, you know what, I think I do have a lot to say. I figured what I would do is just kind of tell you about my personal journey from day one to the present. And so that's what this, uh, that's what this is about. And I'm also gonna tell a story that I've never told publicly my wife, Tori Randalls, is sitting out here in the crowd. She had an encounter that was just riveting. I'm not sure what their capabilities are, if they can cloak, if they can mind speak, if they can vanish. I don't know. I just honestly don't know, so I'm not going to act like I do know. But what I do know is they are special. They're incredibly special. They have capabilities that are just beyond the realm of understanding. The picture above that, you guys probably recognize almost everybody in that picture. It's Robert Leiterman, Cliff Berkman, Bobo, Bart Catino. This is pre-Finding Bigfoot, <laughs> before the show ever happened. And it just kind of shows you, we were all hanging out way before this, this subject got popular. 
you know, at least TV popular. So I love that picture. That was on a trip up to Elk, uh, Elk Meadows at the end of the Go Road in Bluff Creek. We were up on an expedition just having a good time, trying to avoid getting bit by rattlesnakes. And <laughs> my heart is coming out of my chest. It's pitch black out. I'm six miles or six hours off trail by myself with a with a with the equivalent of a BB gun compared to one of these things. I had a 357. I've got the camera on. I'm shaking, and this thing comes down. And right before, about when it got to the creek on the other side of the brush line, I lost my nerve and I turned the tape off. And it was almost like in a cartoon when the cartoon guy just skids to a stop. This thing just went. And all I can hear is, <sighs> and I tell you what, at that moment in time, I was done with Bigfoot research. That's out. And we put Bob Saget in the back seat. Oh, this is my best Bob Saget story. So Cliff neglected to turn his radio on. Matt's behind him by a quarter mile. Cliff's going faster than Matt liked, and so Matt's yelling at Cliff on the radio. Slow down, Cliff. Slow down, Cliff. Cliff's like radio silent. So Matt's speeding up. And he's speeding up. And granted, we're going down a road in the middle of the forest, no headlights, pitch dark, relying on Matt's night vision as he's driving. Bob Sagan is in the back seat, and he literally starts crying. <laughs> and we had buddied up at this point. And he, <laughs> he starts tapping me on the shoulder. He's like, Derek, get him to stop. Get him to stop. And I leaned up and I said, Matt, you need to stop. Matt Pop's getting pissed back here. Matt was in a zone. And he's going down this road and he is flying. And he's going faster and faster. And Bob is like coming out of his skin. And here we have this celebrity in a car, right? And finally, I had to get right behind Matt's head and scream at him, Matt, stop the car. And he finally popped out of his, his haze and he pulls over. And in the documentary, it is just hilarious. Bob gets out. And they're not filming this, but Bob gets out and he pulls me to the back of the car and he goes, if he's driving, I'm walking back. You have to drive. So the next scene on the documentary, it's got me in the driver's seat and Matt's sitting in the back like this. It's just hilarious. And that's actually still in the documentary. But uh, it was an adventure and uh, I'm very thankful that I got to spend some time with him. He was, he was a really cool man and you know, we hope you rest in peace, Bob. Please don't get on the... No, no, no. Get up. No, no, go, go. Get off there. That sounds like a vocalization there. <laughs> Just got sent to me. It's the real deal. It's the real deal. All right. Do you mind if we share it with the world? Go for it. Okay. Well, we did. <laughs> well, we will. This is going to get better. Now, here's the thing though, I didn't describe my interpretation or publish on it or speak on it publicly until the late, as 90s, right, isn't it, 99? There's when Mr. Yuan, who couldn't speak English, who never watched a, a, a history channel or learning channel a documentary, um, that's when he captured this footprint. And Paul Freeman cast this one in uh, 1991. Who's passing out the little black book of instructions on how to fake a, a footprint that Dr. But it will convince Dr. Meldrum that his theory is correct. Well, Todd, I guess uh, you're in one of his books. Uh, tell him, who are you and what, what did you write? Yeah, Todd uh, is in my book, uh, Sasquatch, uh, Search for a New Man. Search and, for a New Man. Uh-huh. Ah. That's a compilation of face-to-face of, uh, -face encounters. Uh, different people across the country. A good many of those are mine. I followed it up with a second volume called Sasquatch Face to Face, and that one is 34 face to face sightings across the country. And, uh, no kidding. So, yeah. All right, well, tell everybody who you are. And, uh, My we'll... name's Tom Cantrell. I've been doing this research for 63 years now. Well, thanks a lot, man. Okay. All right. Now, what is it, your brother? So my brother was um, six years old. I was just a baby in a crib, and uh, we lived out in Colton, Oregon. Portland. Yeah. 
Colton. Colton. Okay, I know the place. Okay, so I am from that place. He looked up and he's six years old and he saw Squatch staring in this, you know, staring in at us. Oh, in the, through the window? Through the window. Yeah, that happens so old. much. He said he looked at you first, I remember that. And he said, you probably imprinted on me. And I was like, that's how I'm connected, man. That's how you, so you're imprinted. And so they kind of, uh, where you go, sometimes they go. Uh, I've seen stuff, yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know, they let They let me, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. I hear that. Yeah. yeah. I hear that. Well, that's a great little story. We'll, yes, yes. We'll stick it on up there. The original bag of poo. Man, other. <laughs> Jeez, are you kidding me? What? No. What else? All right. Well, uh, so uh, is that non-edible? I take it. Oh no, it's it's edible. It's oh, edible poo. All right, there you go, folks. <laughs> Here's a a free plug on edible poo. I've got a. That's like the paint in the newer cars that uh, changes colors, huh? Yeah. And you make this all yourself? Yep, all hand done. Right on. Yeah, well, he's right out of Milwaukee. Lance, Lance. a car right there. So. Yeah, uh, Lance out of Milwaukee. Out of Milwaukee. Cool. What are you guys doing today? We're here from Mount Hood, but Todd's been at this game for a long time. Oh, is that right? He's the speaker and that sort of thing. Years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've, uh, I grew up. <laughs> what, what is he supposed to do with that? You can even put your hand through. You have to go slow though, because if you go too fast, it'll, it'll wrinkle. Get sucked into the work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. Wow, I'm sure you were looking for that. Darren, Lee, some even fast. Hi, Chuck. Good to see you, man. Uh, nice good to see you. He was telling me about you. Yeah, I get a shot of your booth here. Oh, that's oh, yeah. the guy that came down with you. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. More data is needed, and that's why it's important for us to put our heads together and gather as much data as possible. But after us having said those things, the universe is a really weird place, man. It's extraordinarily weird that I'm here on stage now and you're all even looking at me. That's effing weird, you know? It really is. The fact that we exist at all and can contemplate our own existence. The universe is brimming with mystery and beauty. And it's here, some, for some reason, we're here. We get to enjoy it and explore it. And that's rad. Very, very blessed, every one of us. There's a ton of weird stuff. The universe is not only weirder than you think, it is weirder than you can think. Just Bigfoot isn't one of those things, in my take. And I've been doing it a long time. I've said this yesterday at the panel discussion. You should be led by your own personal experiences. If you have seen a Sasquatch wield a magic staff, go for it. Support your claim with evidence. If you have seen a Sasquatch disappear into, in the thin air, if, you th if you're in the Ron Moorhead camp, and Ron's a good friend of mine, I love the man, I'm not dissing him at all. If you think that's the way Ron thinks it, Ron has had weird experiences, cool. Ron's chasing that avenue. I'm glad he's doing it because that means I don't have to. There's only so much time, you know? Everybody should explore this subject in the way that they're interested in. That's all I'm doing. It just turns out after 27, 28 years of doing this and kind of a fair amount of nights and days in the woods and all that other stuff and having a really big cast collection and understanding a little bit about human evolution and biology and as little bit as I do, I don't see anything left to explain about Bigfoots. I just really don't. Everything about them screams evolved here on planet Earth. You know, I just don't see anything to explain, really. So that's my take on it. Maybe I'm wrong, but again, if, if I am wrong, I'm cool with that because I'm an amateur scientist. And proving yourself wrong is my goal. Thank you, guys. All right, we're over here at McMinnin, McMinniman's in Kalama, right? That is correct. I got Todd Nees with me, and uh, Squatch Fest 2022 is a wrap, and we're making our way back down. Now, this was uh, my first one. You, you're a veteran of many, oh, and uh, 
Uh, real quick, like, uh, what, what, what are your thoughts? What's your takeaway from uh, this event? I think it went very well, and it's good to see it come back full strength. We probably had, what, four or five hundred people there, and uh, lots it's... of vendors, and... I would say more on Saturday. It was well, uh, yeah. well filled up, and we'll roll some footage on all of that here. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I spoke at the first one five years ago, and it's kind of taken on a life of its own. But it's a great event, usually held in January, and uh, great, great lineup of speakers and vendors and food carts, and it's a lot of fun. Yeah, there's a, you know, there's a lot of questions I want to uh, dive into here, and we'll do some of that here. We're looking at starting up a dedicated channel. We'll see how that works. Uh, for those of you who uh, are uh, maybe gearheads and from my channel, check it out. Just out of curiosity, go ahead and uh, subscribe and uh, like it, and uh, we will uh, we'll bring you more. What the heck? All of you haters, I know you're out there. You, you're even welcome too. How's that sound? <laughs> so anyway, we're gonna wrap this for now, and we're gonna show you some stuff. So hang in there. I had to throw in this little clip of the urinal here at the McMenamins. Pretty cool place. If you're up this way, you might want to check it out. So once the action slowed down at the event center, then there was Bigfoot Happy Hour over at the Silver Star. And so, hey, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe and hit that bell so we can keep informed of what's coming up next. And share this around to your groups, if you would, so we can all keep hooked up together here. Thanks. We'll catch you then.